Hello Year 11, um, we're going to move on to the next lesson today um, in the electromagnetism topic. Um, this is lesson four and it's called the motor effect. Uh, what we're going to do today is explain the physics behind electric motors. So we're going to recap magnetic fields, we're going to look at the motor effect, look at the equation for it and then try and explain all of this using Fleming's left hand rule. So let's do a recap of magnetic fields. Um, so a magnetic field is invisible, we can't see it. We can represent it with field lines as shown in the top diagram here. Um, the compass needle points along the field line. Okay, so let's uh, get the compass needle. Let's just have a look there. You can see the compass needle and it's following this field line around here like this. Okay, so we can't see the field line, but we know where they are because the compass needles follow the field lines. This bar magnet um, has also has field lines down here as well, which go from north to south like that, and then they come around like this as well. Okay, so we get a symmetrical pattern uh, shown in this diagram. Okay, um, so a magnetic field is a region where a magnetic force is experienced. Each of these little compasses is like its own little magnet. So the point one end is the north and the tail is the south. And you can see that the north end of the compass is attracted to the south end of the magnet. Um, all the magnetic materials, nix, nickel, iron, cobalt and steel. OK, so that's a quick recap of magnetic fields. Um, we can create a uniform magnetic field. So this is important for motors. We need a uniform magnetic field. If two opposite poles are brought near each other, a uniform magnetic field is created. So if I bring north close to south, what we get in the center here, OK, get my highlighter. This area in here is a uniform magnetic field. OK, now if we make the north and the south poles a bit bigger, then we get this area. You can see that the field lines are parallel. OK, so these field lines here are parallel to each other and they're equally spaced. OK, and that means that it's the same magnetic force everywhere in that area. And that's what we call a uniform magnetic field. OK, let's recap this. I did teach you this um, in class. This is the magnetic effect of a current. This is where we take a piece of wire. OK, so we've got a wire here, here and here. If we pass an electric current through the wire, then a magnetic field appears around the wire. OK, so I'm going to show you that with the top diagram here. So this top diagram, we have a current moving up that wire. OK, it's moving up the wire. As soon as the current moves, we get a magnetic field appearing around the wire. So it's circular. Now we've got to decide which direction we're going in and you can see here this is the what we call the right hand screw rule right hand screw so we use our right hand you put your thumb in the direction of the current your fingers wrap around the wire and they show us the direction so we get these circular field lines and we get the direction would be anti-clockwise. Okay. If we reversed the direction of the current, then the magnetic fields would point in the opposite direction. Okay. This effect was first demonstrated by Hans Christian Ersted, and he demonstrated this. Um, another famous scientist that also investigated this was Michael Faraday. Right, so let's move on. If we bring two fields together, so we've got the uniform field from these permanent magnets 
So we've got the uniform field here from the permanent magnets, which are the blue lines. And we also put a wire in between these two permanent magnets. Remember the wire, as soon as the current goes around the wire, we get a circular magnetic field around the wire. So, and that's all the way down the wire. So as soon as a current appears, we get circular magnetic field lines. So what we're getting here is two magnetic fields interacting with each other. Two magnetic fields, one from the permanent magnets and one from the wire. And we know that when you bring magnetic fields near each other, they either do one of two things, they either repel or they attract. So the net result of all of this is that we get um, a force on the wire. Okay, we get a force on the wire. Now I will tell you um, shortly how to work out the direction, but yet you can see that there's the direction here is downwards. That wire will move downwards, it's pushed downwards. Okay, if I reversed the current in the wire, then the, that force would push the wire upwards. Okay, if I reversed the north and the south pole, that would make it go in the opposite direction as well. Let's move on and see if we can explain this. Now, in order to work out the direction that the wire moves, we use something called Fleming's left hand rule. Fleming's left hand rule. So you have to hold up your left hand, point with your first finger, point straight ahead, use your second finger to represent the current, and that points to the right. Then your thumb points directly upwards. You should try and do this at home. So I'm going to repeat this again. Take your left hand with your first finger, point forwards. With your second finger, point to the right. And with your thumb, point upwards. Now, each of these um, fingers and thumbs represents something. So let me write these down. So the motion, uh, well, that's the thumb represents the motion of the wire. The field is the first finger, F there, and the second finger is the current. Okay, so you've got to learn that and remember it. Now, um, let's look at the situation down here. Let's have a look at this one down here. Now, the field, so we're gonna point our first finger that way okay so you've got to now move your hand around so that your first finger is pointing left to right the current is coming basically out of the page so your second finger should point towards you which means that your thumb points upwards and that indeed is the direction that the wire moves okay so we can use Fleming's left hand rule to work out the direction that a wire moves. Now you need to know this for the higher level. I have posted a separate video on the lesson page, um, a more pro a professionally produced video which explains Fleming's left hand rule, so I would watch that. Why does the wire move? Okay, why does it move? Because we've got two magnetic fields which interact. Um, we First of all, we've got the two, um, using this one down here, um, you had two permanent magnets, north and south, and that created a uniform field, yeah, which is equally spaced parallel lines. You also had a wire, now the wire is in the middle there, and around the wire, when it's carrying a current, we get a circular magnetic field pattern. Now, when you bring those two things together, so if we put the wire, there's the wire, and we put it between these two magnets, the two magnetic fields join together. So underneath here, underneath, it's much stronger, okay, because the fields are adding together. So that becomes strong. It's not very clear, do it in red, strong. 
and above it's weak. So what happens is that the wire gets pushed upwards from the strong to the weak. Okay, let's look at the equation and we can we can use this equation to work out the strength of the magnetic force. You simply multiply uh, the magnetic flux density B. Okay, so this is oopsie daisy. I didn't want to do that. Let's undo that. The magnetic flux density B, which is that one there. Um, now this is a new concept for you, but it's basically how strong the magnetic field is. It's measured in something called Tesla. Now you see where the car gets its name from. It's named after this magnetic flux density, Tesla. Um, okay, now that's how close the magnetic field lines. The closer the magnetic field lines are, the stronger the magnetic field, the greater the flux density, the bigger this value measured in Tesla. Okay, um, we've also got the current there measured in amps. And we've also got the length of the conductor. So the length of wire that's between the magnets measured in meters. Multiply those together and you will, can work out the force. We can work out the force. OK, so I will find a question for you to practice that using that equation. It's actually very straightforward. All you've got to do is multiply three numbers together. Um, OK, we're going to leave this now till next lesson. You do have to understand something about electric motors. I'm going to leave that to next lesson. It's a bit more complicated and I think we've done enough already today. So we'll go. Uh, we'll leave it there. I want to thank you for listening. You may want to replay this video and make some notes in your book. Um, do watch the other video that I've posted as well. I will put some a couple of past paper questions as an assignment. I would like you to do those, please. And I will be create a multi-choice test as well based on this. So once again, thank you for listening.